Hello everybody, it's Sesame Medhaven here today, and I'm pretty sure you enjoyed that little bit of an intro. However, both those tanks we're not going to be featuring today. Today's feature is going to be inside the T1103. Um, this is actually one of my favorite tier 10s, in all honesty. I, it saddens me that I don't see it more often. Um, I run a toolbox on this, along with a traction system and a uh, advanced loader. Once upon a time, it was called a gun rammer. So, I mean, we're all confused about that. Anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at my commander, and um, then we're going to be jumping into a match. Uh, born leader, rapid loading, clutch braking, six cents, muffled shot, off-road driving, situational awareness, track mechanic, and steady aim. Other than that, let's go ahead and dive into this. And we're ending up on Canis. Honestly, we got... Igloo with us. He's in uh, Nerds. He's in his own little platoon there. And I mean, looking at the lineup here, I'm like, I, I'm not really afraid of a whole lot. However, I am a little bit afraid of the artillery just because that's a lot of rate of fire. That's a tier nine. If he's got the fully upgraded gun, he's going to be devastating. If he doesn't, then I'm not going to be as sad about it. Um, currently in this match, though, he is not fully upgraded. So I, I was a little bit lucky instead of getting hit for you know, like 800, 700 a shot. Anyways, we all know how slow the E3 is, so let's go ahead and jump up in the gameplay. And here we are, taking the middle position over at F6. It's actually, during the encounter on Canis, this is one of my favorite positions to go to. Just because if you lock down in a heavy enough tank, you just relocate based upon reloads and what's hitting you. Currently coming in from left... And do I thread it? No, I don't, unfortunately. I should have taken a little bit more time to aim that one out. Um, in a situation like this, though, if I'm seeing red or white fly at me, um, I usually do, like, a slight angle against it. You know, like, I can over-angle a tad bit, not really worry about it too much. Um, but if I'm seeing blue, uh, then that's whenever I start to get a little bit uncomfortable and I need to really just put my armor towards that target. For instance, the hard case firing heat, the artillery firing non-stop. I wanted to save my repair kit for uh, in case I got tracked by artillery. I didn't want to get tracked out and risk anything else. So once I saw the extra artillery shell come in, that's whenever I popped my repair kit. Because now I know I'm not worried about repairing my gun or anything else. I'm just worried about where am I going to go next. I want to be able to have that mobility. So saving that repair kit. Use it whenever it's necessary, not whenever it's like, oh, my... My tracks are broken, but the artillery is coming at me again. You know, you pop your repair kit, and the next thing you know, you're already tracked again because you used a repair kit, and now you're stuck. Uh, anyways, the E3, this is a tank that uh, I've been wanting the 3 mark for a really long time, but I haven't really invested a whole lot into it. Today, though, I believe I played five matches inside of it, and this is my best one. I had one where I did 6,000. I had another one where I did 5,000, but this one was the last one I played inside of it, so I was like, you know what, that's that's today's goal. That is the match I'm going to be using. Um, I have two other replays that are decent matches, and uh, more than likely I'll be using those for a later date, but for today it's going to be some E3 action, because you don't see a lot of people show off the E3. I absolutely love the E3. You get this thing in a haul down position, good luck tearing it out. Now, if you guys didn't know, you can pin the gun mantle at the E3 with uh, 310 millimeters of penetration. So if you ever do get face hugged by it, just aim at the ring around the gun. That is a pinnable location. And there we go. Hi, Kron. Uh, let me just pull down right here. I don't think I'm going to be getting much of an easy shot, but all right. We're going to put 831 into the 780. And we're going to get hit by our artillery. So now I know it's time to just need to get out of here because I don't want to get spammed. But judging by the way that the shell was and how much damage I took, the next one that landed, uh, it was almost the same time as my reload. That's like a 16 second reload on that uh, 212A. But we're going to put an 865 in the back of the Kron here, up to 3000 damage. And we're still getting welted. Blocking tanks, don't let him get by me. So I'm tracked, he's tracked, I'm not going to use my repair kit because I'm all like, you know what, I got toolbox on this. My repairs are extremely fast, so I'm not really worried about it. Now, the reasoning behind the toolbox and the traction system inside the E3 for me is that this is a front-mounted tank. Your gun is permanently locked down. By the way, I'm loading a high-explosive shell. This is why I wanted to play my 4,005-inch Drum Tiger. I wanted the HE some tanks. Boom! 1,092 into the 4,005. That was a lovely shot. Um... 
So today for me has just been nothing but big guns. Uh, 130s, 155s, 170s, and then what is it, 380 on the Strum Tiger? I can't remember off the top of my head. I'm just happy that the Strum Tiger doesn't have an AP shell because that means it'd be overmatching 120 millimeter plates like no tomorrow. So that to me, I'm happy about this. Unfortunately for me here, I should have waited. I should have followed the hard case. He he has jinked me. He has jinxed my janks, man. He's got to unjinx my janks because he's done it to me twice now. So yeah, that that's I guess that's my fault more than it is his. I, oh, and here's Igloo. Oh, the slippery rocks. He hit an invisible wall. I could have had a shot. Igloo, you son of a gun. Uh, it's fine. It's fine. Watch this. I'm so confused on why this is here. Oh, it's not yet. It's close, though. I'm sitting here. I'm being patient. Now I'm backing up. Why is there a wall here? I I was so confused. Look at that. Why is it there? There's no point to have a wall. Why is it there? No. Bad war gaming. Fix it. All right. I got another little bit of a clip I'm going to show off at the end of this match as well. And the, the, the Sin, whatever the heck, the flamethrower tank, or I don't even have any idea what that tank is. Um, yeah, he comes over, he puts a decent little 300 into me. I have no idea what his alpha is, but I, I did not like it. He, um, he, he shot me in the side. But I, I have another clip I'm going to be showing off after this match, which is I've experienced like really weird placement in maps, and I'm not a big fan of it. Now, whenever you're playing the E3, make sure that you're actually haul down. Um, if you got to drive backwards up a hill ever so slightly to increase the thickness of your lower plate, that way you have really good shot. I do believe right here... No, not yet. Whenever the grill... There's a grill 15 on the enemy team. It is 3 to 6 right now. You know, they got a roof list. They got some other fun stuff. Here we go. Beautiful. Premium shell into the side of him. I mean, I'm running out of standards, so of course I'm going to be loading in the premium. He already fired, so I'm going to back up, and boom, there was another shell. And then I, after like a couple of seconds, I finally look at my map because, you know, my big brain's like, oh, map, whoa, there's a grill there. And I see him for a split second. You're going to notice I keep my camera in that angle, but I'm staring at where the grill was because I'm like, if he's still there, I'm going to blind fire it. But I pulled over. And I'm like, eh, there? Okay, so I would have missed my blind shot, but there we go. 796, 3,830 ricochets so far. I mean, we've already blocked two times our hit points almost. Um, grill? Hey, how you doing? You broke my gun, but the shell flies true. I I'm very happy about that one. Pop in the repair kit. Hard case pulling up, and I'm like, you know what? I'm pushing the hard case. You don't have my lower plate. I'm not going to give you my lower plate. And I'm not missing this one. <laughs> there we go. Beautiful. Straight into the side. Um, but, you know, there's invisible walls around the map. And, man, are they annoying. They, they need to fix a couple of them. The one I'm going to be showing you, you're, it's not even an invisible wall. I just got high-centered. And it was, a, it was a blast from the past of what I don't want to do. I'm, I'm working on some gameplay for the review of the 780. And then after I'm done with the 780, then I'm going to be going after Old Reliable. So I, I'm a little bit excited about that one. But now it's just a patient game. It's 3-3. Three to three. It was 6-3. to three, But we had it, another invisible wall that is here that uh, made me take a shell from the Grill 15. So please, War Game, fix the invisible walls. And how many times is my gun going to break this game? Is this the fourth time? I have no idea. But it broke so many times throughout this match. I mean, I got a big barrel. At least it's taking the hits for me. And here we go. Oh, there's artillery again. That small gun, and he's firing away like there's no tomorrow. E50. I was kind of like, I want to pull. I want to get a shot in the E50. Hi, artillery. It's so lovely to see. I'm happy I don't need to use a repair kit on my tracks because I got toolbox and track mechanic and born leader all combined. But it's like, oh my gosh. Hello, artillery. There's another one. And... As I'm thinking about it, I'm driving, I'm driving, I'm happy driving. You know, I'm just, I love trees. I hit a couple of them on the way here. And I thought, as I'm already on my way there, I'm like, oh, I know where artillery is. I'm, I don't want to waste a premium shell on this. So I load in a standard. And as I'm loading in my standard, I realized, oh, I have all the opportunity in the world, but I, I'm five seconds left in my reload because I don't want to waste a premium shell on the artillery. I was like, you know what? I'm, I want to be efficient this game. I don't want to waste any money. 
but I did get the assist off it, so I'm not super sad about that. I got some assist off the artillery, so I'm a little bit happy about that. And good game. I said thanks. I was saying I, I can't remember what I was trying to say. It's whatever where thanks isn't on the opposite page. Um, ready to fire or, or something. I can't remember. Fall back. I, I wanted to get a little bit more damage in because, you know, I'm a little bit greedy. I, I wanted to get that extra shot. Anyways, 8,317 damage, 5 kills, and a little bit of a comeback. This is actually a really nice game. 14 direct hits, 2,606 assisted, 2 detections. Um, and this actually brought it back up to a 2 mark. It was originally a 1 mark, so I finally brought it back up. Anyways, let's go take a look at the high center gameplay because you have no idea how irritated I was at it. Here I am in the 780. We're getting aggressive. We're like, yeah, it's 10 to 4. And here I am like, oh my... What's going on? And I tried to get out of the spot, but there was no going anywhere. I tried to use my clutch. I tried to use everything. I'm just, I aim in, I take a shot. It's like, I'm full health. I'm still good to go. But look at this. You'll see the tank jam up and you can see by the left track stopping, I'm using clutch to try and get out of this position too, because sometimes hitting your clutch will force you out of a position. But unfortunately, uh, I was going nowhere inside this tank at all. Uh, but I can say 780's got an amazing gun. A really good gun. Anyways, you guys, that's all I have for you today. Uh, a little bit of E3, uh, a couple of high centers, really stupid uh, invisible wall placements. I got my war chest. Uh, speaking of which, since we're actually going to be mentioning war chests, whatever you do, don't buy the tank war chest. It is not a tank war chest. It is a 2% drop chance. It tells you in here that you, after 25, open 22 more for me because I bought two prior. They're garbage. They don't give you gold back. It's only silver, which means you're investing into something that you're going to get nothing out of. You're better off taking the 25,000 gold that they're asking for one of these and actually buying the tier 10 because it's going to be cheaper the next time that they release it. Anyways, guys, thanks for being here. You have a great day, afternoon, night, whatever time it is for you. I'm out.